Okay, uh, good morning everybody. Uh, some great presentations uh, uh, so far uh, uh, this morning. and It's just wonderful to see so many uh, familiar faces uh, in the room. Uh, so I'm Bob Doherty. I'm Chair of Agri-Food and Marketing at the University of York. That's one hat. I also wear another hat and then I'm a Policy Fellow in the new Systems Programme team uh, within the Chief Scientist Office, Gideon Henderson, in, in DEFRA. Uh, so it, it's seeing both sides of the, of, the, of the fence is really, really interesting. I've been asked to, th to talk about three topics today. The first topic is some of my experiences in managing a large interdisciplinary research program called I Know Food, which was funded in the uh, 2016 uh, call uh, from the Global Food Security Program. The third thing, sorry, the second thing, is the topic is to say a little bit about my role in DEFRA and finally is some reflections on challenges and solutions to leading a large interdisciplinary uh, program working in the food system. So I've got about uh, 20 minutes to do that. I'm going to try and speed up because I know some of you are keen to, keen to ask questions. Now, I know food, it's, uh, it involves five different interdisciplinary uh, five, sorry, five different uh, departments at the University of York, five different disciplines, two different research institutes. It involves engineering here at the University of Manchester and also psychology at Liverpool, not too far from here. All collaborating on food, system, food systems uh, resilience. And I was kind of reflecting on this uh, over the past few weeks in that when we actually applied for the grant back in 2015, and we got the news that we'd been successful. And I think June 2016, the world was a very different place. It was pre-Trump, pre-Bolsonaro, pre the referendum. And, you know, it just shows you how the geopolitical landscape is really, really important in its impacts uh, on the food system. And also, what's happened since then, and Guy mentioned this earlier, is this is this raft of uh, policy initiatives in the food space. I mean, the food policy environment has never been busier. There are so many levers that academics and civil society organisations can get involved in, in terms of uh, affecting change. And obviously the most recent one is the National Food Strategy, which has actually got a call for evidence out at the moment, which actually completes at the end of this week. So if you've got something great, if you've got a great idea, doesn't matter what type of organisation and what sector you're working in, you, you've got a thousand words to put that call for evidence in to the National Food Strategy, which you've already heard is uh, chaired by Henry Dimbleby. Now the I Know Food team was brought together really a bunch of people that were transfixed by the problems in the food system. These kind of wicked and super wicked problems that we've been hearing about uh, this morning. And this is our depiction of the food system. So this is another diagram for you to, to think about. But what's great about taking the food systems approach is that it lends itself to interdisciplinary working. It also allows you to look at the interlinkages between, between different parts of the food system. If you look here, the activities, the food system outcomes, the environmental drivers and the socio-economic drivers all interacting together and all providing feedback loops uh, to the food system. Now, what we think is also important in the I Know Food program is this element of governance of power. Because all the problems that Guy very, very, you know, very effectively articulated earlier, they haven't happened by accident. We've got here somehow and often it's poor governance, you know, abuse of power within the food system. And so we've added governance and power into our depiction of, of the food system. But what's great about taking the food systems approach is it allows you to look at uh, trade-offs, unintended consequences uh, from different policy and different industry practice. And so I guess I, what, I would, what I would recommend you all to do if you're developing consortia is think very carefully about taking, taking this, uh, this particular approach. So I know food. I'm going to really just talk very briefly about I know food and some of our key themes that we've been working on. We've been working with farmers, 
really taking a social learning approach to uh, innovation and technology development. You know, if you look at the, all the UK policy documents around transforming food production, people have been concerned for some time about low technology take-up within the farming community. So what we've tried to do is work with farmers to identify their needs and then build, working with engineers and scientists and those people who are very good at part participatory social learning approaches to actually identify technology needs and design technologies. I'll say a little bit more about that later. We've been unpacking very complex international commodity, commodity supply chains. I'm going to talk about that in a moment as well. And also looking at how society shaping uh, consumption, particularly in lower uh, socio-demographic uh, groups. So a little bit about our work with farmers. As I said, we've been taking a social learning approach. We've set up farmer learning groups up and down the country. The farmers themselves have identified their technology needs. And now actually, working with engineers here at Manchester, working with, in fact, we've been able to bring other people in that weren't initially involved in the original application, molecular biologists at the University of York, veterinary practices, to actually start building up these new technologies which have been identified uh, by the farmers, really taking this interdisciplinary uh, approach. So this is a, a take a little bit of uh, getting your head around, a, a typical academic slide I think, uh, but I'll, I'll break it down quite, quite simply. We've been investigating one, we, we've been investigating a number of high risk commodities, particularly those things that are imported into the United Kingdom, and one of them is soy. And we call this our soy story. And what's interesting about soy is that it's become a very cheap protein source for animal feed. In, in fact, in the United Kingdom, about 80% of the soy we import into the UK is used in animal feed. Some of it is used, obviously, in beans, some of it is used in bean curds, some of it is used in other composite uh, food products as well. But this is the impact it causes in Brazil in terms of biodiversity loss, you know, as a result of deforestation. And we know from bringing environmental scientists, from bringing trade analysts, from bringing political scientists together with management scientists and psychologists, we've actually, using trade data, been able to pinpoint exactly where the UK sources its soy from and what that soy is used for, whether it's pig, poultry, cattle feed, or even in some cases, fish uh, feed. It's been, become a, a very, very important uh, protein source for the livestock industry here in the United Kingdom. But obviously, these supply chains are creating quite a lot of uh, negative you know, consequences on planetary health. And what's interesting, if you look at chapter 6 of the 25-year environment plan, page 110, it says that the United Kingdom you know, we'll, we'll practice supply chains that do not cause deforestation. You know, we, we want supply chains that are zero deforestation. And a number of retailers and also other big manufacturer food companies are signed up to the Amsterdam Declaration, which is all about uh, z zero deforestation. What we've also been doing with our psychology colleagues at Liverpool is actually, because if you think about it, the consumer does not know about soy. It's embedded, it's invisible. When the consumer buys their piece of chicken or their piece of pork in the retailer, there's no information about how that animal has been reared in terms of what it's been fed upon. And so using our psychology colleagues, online work and in, in the laboratory experimental work, we've been testing with consumers their attitudes to soy if they're given more information on pack. So this is a great example all disciplines working together on a particular problem that's been created by our modern food system. You know, these complex international commodity chains. And you think of our commitments to uh, the Sustainable Development Goals and our climate change commitments, this is a serious issue. Uh, and we've been able to unpack it and shed light upon it. And we're really proud of uh, this particular piece of work. Just moving on, just quickly, I'm not going to go through all these, these, this stakeholder engagement we've been very big on. 
with in our food, and I think this has come out in this particular call, and it's very important. Just a few highlights. We've been working with the Round Table on Responsible Soy, uh, helping them to improve their, their standards, and we've also helped certain retailers make stronger commitments towards their sourcing of soy with their, with their livestock supplier groups. <laughs> and also the co-op here, based in Manchester, I know some, some of my friends here from the co-op uh, today, is that we've been helping them, we're well, working with them in co-production to produce their Future of Food report, which was launched last September in Manchester. You might, you might recognise the venue, it's from Peaky Blinders. It's Victoria Baths here in Manchester. And um, we, if, you know, if you look at the Future of Food report, it talks about food systems, it talks about resilience, and it's very, very much a kind of interesting partnership between a, 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 a food retailer and uh, an academic uh, programme. And finally, uh, Ian Boyd, the previous chief scientist, decided himself, he had the vision, working with people like Guy, to set up a systems program team within DEFRA to take a food systems approach to all that raft of policy development within the, within the food space. And I'm just going to take a few minutes just to talk about the systems program team in DEFRA. Obviously Gideon Henderson is now the new chief scientist in DEFRA and he's very, very supportive of, of this approach. So, who was in the team? As you can see, uh, there's a number of different academics with responsibility of different parts of the food system, uh, different parts of the kind of uh, DEFRA uh, environment and food system. Um, three of those academics are from the north of England, uh, which, is, which is good. And um, what's also interesting is that we have a counterpart as well, working in DEFRA, so we work very closely with our counterparts, and we're working on right across those different uh, policy areas. You'll recognise a few of the names. Uh, Frank Boone's from Manchester, Sarah Moller from York, uh, I don't really need to, uh, you'll, you'll know all the, all the others, I'm sure. So what have we been doing? My role has two really different areas which overlap. The first one is getting involved in live policy making. So I'm involved in, myself personally, working with my counterpart, involved in helping Henry Dimbleby with the National Food Strategy. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Also the new, the, the forthcoming uh, next uh, National Food Security Assessment, which will take place uh, in the next 12 months. But more importantly, it's really embedding a food systems approach in DEFRA. So developing a toolkit of methods developing a training program for DEFRA staff, and also starting to set up a cross-government food systems group, not just DEFRA, because if you think about it, there's actually 20 different government departments and directorates that actually have an impact on the food system. And so if we're taking the systems approach, we need to take also a systems approach across government, and guys have been very supportive of, of that approach. We've been developing these different methods, a toolkit of methods, for DEFRA staff, looking at quantitative and qualitative methods in the food system, and also looking at non-participatory and participatory methods, uh, and practicing, practicing these methods with internal and, and external stakeholders. So where I know food and this DEFRA work have come together, I'll give you one example, is on the 8th of November uh, this year, we have a citizens' food assembly in York, right in the center of York, in a, in a residential area, we, we, we're expecting about 90 people uh, to come along. We're going to be talking about food challenges, what people eat, what's good, what's bad about the food system. And we're partnering, as you can see, with the National Food Strategy. Uh, they're, they're, they're intending to run a set of citizens' assemblies in 2020. And this is a kind of pilot. And I know that UKRI have been very supportive of these participatory citizens' assemblies, because if we're going to get down deeper, we need, to get, we, need to, we need to understand what citizens are thinking and their experience, lived experience of uh, food. If you want to come along, there's an Eventbrite link uh, to the... Henry Dimbleby will be there speaking. Our vice chancellors also will be there speaking as well. But it's created a lot of interest uh, within the city of York. We've got farmers coming, we've got uh, civil society groups, We've got hoteliers, we've got retailers, we've got the local government, we've got the LEP, 
blah blah blah, you know, real stakeholder, uh, a real stakeholder approach. Finally, just some reflections on my experience of uh, managing all these egos within an interdisciplinary academic program, all these professors from different universities. But actually, it's been a joy. It really, really has been a joy. And some, I guess, because you will be building, your, some of you will be building these consortia, it's very important to identify uh, some, what I call, uh, knowledge brokers. Because it's those people, and there's a number of them in this room, you have to be prepared to work and go across disciplines. Uh, Lisa Campbell calls them knowledge brokers. People who are, are comfortable with being uncomfortable. You know, working across disciplines, being a student. You know, when I started to talk to my friends, my engineering colleagues here at the University of Manchester, I didn't have a clue what they were talking about. Uh, but now I've become a student of agricultural engineering. And I think that's the attitude uh, to take, is really deal with these misconceptions by identifying knowledge brokers to be part of your consortia, build collegiality, because you can't work in the silos. This call has to be transformative. It's not good enough to work in themes. You have to work across themes. One of the things in DEFRA that we're working on is net zero. So all six of those in, uh, policy fellows are working together on the cross-cutting theme, which is net zero. And we have to do this in this call. It's really, really important that we, we get out of our silos. Consensus takes time. So as a PI, I spent a lot of time before what, designing the grant application, but also in the early stages, building relationships and bringing people together. Uh, and and um, that has to be done in the outset. Mixed methods is also important. And one of the challenges, I guess, particularly for, for early career researchers, is, and some of you are in this room, is the newness of related journals. You know, that, that, that lack of kind of inter good interdisciplinary journals. But they are on the increase. The good news is they're on the increase. Nature Food is a good example. You know, there are increasing, you know, we're publishing global policy, um, so on and so forth. There are increasing opportunities, and it's just, you know, selecting the right one to, to begin with. And having an open mind to that and writing together as, inter as disciplines actually builds consensus and, 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 uh, and skill. And finally, good governance and management. We have quarterly meetings, they're all advertised at the start of the year. We have w meetings between those quarterly meetings with all the, with the different work packages, but we all get together quarterly. We have a very good scientific advisory committee that pushes all the time. Some of you are in this room. Uh, you know, challenges on the interdisciplinarity. We have a great funder, the Global Food Security Fund. We have annual reporting for the, for the Global Food Security Fund. We have annual, annual reporting for Research Fish. Might mean nothing for those people who, who haven't had to report through Research Fish before. But we have a lot of reporting points, uh, and, uh, and that's good. You know, it keeps us on our toes, and uh, I think it's really worked very, very well. So those will be some lessons to pass on to those people brave enough in this room to take on this challenge, which is a great challenge, and I, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much. Great, thanks to 